This video will demonstrate how to hook up your iambic pedals to your computer's serial port so that you can use the software CW Keyer so that you can uh, run Morse code on your computer with your pedals. I have my pedals hooked to my USB to serial port adapter which works just as well and I'm using Morse Keyer since it's one of the better ones I've found and this is what it sounds like And so I have the ability on Moore's Keir. First of all, it has raised cosines on the edges, which is excellent. You can also adjust the tone, the envelope as far as the edges, as far as how much rise and fall time you want, and the volume that you hear right here, what serial port to listen to, and whether or not to use it with the check mark right there. So mine is check marked. One of the, the best things I found is to use an ASIO sound card and an ASIO driver. This will give you the best CW timing and the lowest latency and delay from the time you tap the paddle handle until you actually hear it. I'm running right now about 20 milliseconds of latency and that is not noticeable so it's it's almost immediate, immediate and in the, I think they term that near zero latency. So you can hear me tap and you can hear the tone right there hopefully and notice that it's very hard to sense any delay whatsoever. So how do we do this? How do we get your pedals hooked up to your serial port and get more secure to work with everything? And one of the other advantages is you can use this to send Morse code over the internet whether you're on CWCOM, QSONET, HamSphere, or ICW, or some other one where you're using CW audio tones over the internet in some VoIP-like program. And I'll go over that in just a minute. So let's talk about, first of all, why it's important to use uh, ASIO sound card. There's an article right here, and this will all be in the show notes advantages of using an ASIO sound card. So there's an article right there. Go over that and it'll explain everything. The, the most benefit of course is that the consistent of the consistency of the timing. If you don't use an ASIO sound card you're going to get some jitteriness and the CW timing will sound kind of awkward. You'll have dits that don't sound right. The timing doesn't sound right. Here's a good example we're going to send a DIT stream here at 37 and uh, then we're going to send it with with an ASIO driver, then we're going to send it with a Windows driver. So listen to this for a second. Okay, now that was with an ASIO driver. Very nice, very consistent. Now listen to what happens when we try to use a Windows audio driver. kind of ratchety and uneven so that's not very desirable and it doesn't make for a good Morse code so this is one of the biggest advantages the other one is the latency issue and I have a little diagram here I have also have another uh, professional music ASIO sound card and I'm down to less than 10 milliseconds from the time you tap the paddle until the tone is actually made so that's really good but Here's a comparison of that with the one I'm using right now, this Behringer. In the Behringer at 20 to 30 milliseconds, it's still near zero latency and you really can't notice any delay at all. Okay, so how do we get from your paddles to the serial port? So you've just bought your Mercury paddle or your Bengali and you want to hook it up to your computer. The best thing to do is to get a diagram like this so that you do it right. QSONET has a nice picture of it and all these links will be in the show notes. So basically you're going to wire the DIT and DA and the, the common or your um, pedal ground. And you'll, so you'll only need three connections. Now I've also found it helpful that if you're going to do it this way Sometimes the paddles themselves will act like a capacitor and you'll get random dits or dots sent just from the static buildup. So using a switch debouncer helps a little bit and 
puts a little resistance between the two pins. And on this article here at the bottom, that same article, there's a little bit of a diagram that I came up with that seems to work pretty good. So it has to charge and be released through this capacitor here, which slows everything down. So that keeps it uh, calmed down a little bit so that you just don't get random or you get bouncing things that uh, make the Morse code sound kind of choppy periodically. You'll get like a pop or a click out of it if you get some debouncing. Now Morse Keyer has some software debouncing but the combination of what's in the program itself and this hardware circuit external to the software seems to make a good combo there and make it uh, well behaved. Again here's the pinout on the same article and how to do that. So you got all that wired up. So how do you get the sound if you're going to use a Behringer how are you going to listen to this? We're not going to listen to the Behringer itself. We're going to run a cable from the output here over to the input of your sound card. Most sound cards on a laptop only have a mic inject, so we're going to use that. And I'll show you all the settings here in a second, but let's get the concept. So we're going to come out of the Behringer into the microphone jack. Now you don't want to do that with just an audio cable. You really should consider getting a ground loop isolator. Very inexpensive, but that'll keep the grounds from here and from your serial port and your computer from messing up the audio. And all you need to run to use this cable to run from the Behringer, since it's RCA, it'll, it'll hook right to this one. But you'll also you'll need to have an adapter so that it can go into your computer. So something like this. So the cable that connects to the Behringer is going to connect to this adapter here, these two RCA plugs, and then at the other end it connects to here with that stereo eighth inch jack. So once that that's done then you just just a matter of setting the volumes correctly. So we're going to monitor the mic in jack. That's how we're going to hear what the Behringer is playing. We're not going to hook any speakers to the Behringer. We're not going to hook headphones to the Behringer. We're going to listen to whatever plays on this sound card on the laptop. In order to do this though, you have to check your volume icon. Go down there, right click, and click playback. And figure out what the name of your sound card is highlight it and click properties and then click levels. If you have a microphone slider then it'll work. So it'll probably be muted by default so just unmute it then anything that goes into your microphone you're going to hear it on your laptop sound card. And this is just the general volume this upper slider and this one is just how much you want to hear of the microphone or what's coming in the microphone. So this is a direct monitor to what the microphone jack is, what's coming into it. If you don't have this, you'll have to check around on the net and try to Google it and see if there's a workaround or a driver that you need in order to get this into the speaker properties. Okay, so if you've done it and you've unmuted it, set the volume so you display. and adjust this however how much volume you want to hear then that's set to go so we're good for that so now we're playing on the Behringer and but we're listening through headphones or speakers on the laptop sound card because we're able to monitor what coming in the microphone jack now one of the advantages of this is now you can send this microphone audio not only can you hear it, but you can also send it to any of the internet Morse code uh, sites that are set up, sort of like QSONET, Hamsphere, Echolink, ICW. So in the settings here, I'm using my microphone as the input. I don't have a microphone hooked to it. I've got the Behringer hooked to it. So here's what the volume will look like, this VU meter. So, and that's right where it seems to work best on using mumble. 
So that's good. And then on the output, again, I'm just listening to the laptop sound card. And it sounds pretty good. We're good to go. So you hit apply. OK. You're still able to hear everything. So we double check that. OK. So whether it's QSONET, Hamsphere, or any of the other ones, CWCOM, there's uh, quite a selection out there now. This is one great way to use your iambic pedals and send that audio over to it without having to use stereo mix and push the talk buttons. Stereo mix is really tough, slows down everything, plus it, you run the risk that anything that's on your computer will bounce right back out and, and uh, you'll get an echo or a feedback loop going and nobody else can get in there until that loop back stops. Okay. The one of the best USB to serial port adapters is this one that uses an FTDI chip that uh, as far as what I've been reading still pretty good price though. And there's an article here about the importance of debouncing. There's the Morse code tools site from Morse Cure. Amazon, I think we've got everything running there. So that's basically how to set up your paddles to your computer so that you can not only hear what your, uh, your uh, Morse keyer is sending on your computer sound card using an ASIO with excellent uh, performance as far as CW timing and the quality of the CW note, but you can also because you're coming in the mic jack, send it audio over to something like a VoIP program like Mumble, Skype, Google Hangouts, Google Talk. Uh, so whatever there's a VoIP program, instead of using your normal mic, you're just going to use that Behringer that's coming in the mic jack to send audio out. Now let's go over the settings. That's one of the important things if, to get right. So we're going to go to the mic jack now on the recording tab. So mine is set at 1. That's very important. Absolutely no microphone boost. You want this as low as you can get it. And I have this just one or two notches down from the top. And that volume seems to mix very well. If you have this set up too high, you're going to get a lot of noise from the mic jack. So you want the microphone jack as low as possible. No boost. And that seems to work pretty good. And that's on uh, this particular recording tab of your speaker icons properties. Alright, I think that pretty much sums it up. So I hope you guys can have a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's really cool being able to hook up your paddles to your serial port and use uh, a fine program like Morse Keyer that does a great job of sending iambic CW with raised cosines and a way to adjust the envelope so that you can adjust this to send harder or softer CW notes. Thanks for watching.